welcome to New Covenant Worship Center today. We are so glad that you could join us. We invite you in. We ask you to join in us for praise and worship today and celebrate on this resurrection day the one true and risen Savior. In his word, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All the old is passed away. Behold, all things become brand new. So we want to invite you today. If you don't know this true and risen Savior, and you're ready to put away the old man, go ahead. Take part in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 and become new with us today. So stand, praise with us, worship with us, sing along if you know the song. We invite you today to be one with us.
his praises one day when sin was as black as could be jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelt among
Good Resurrection Sunday morning, everyone. Glad you could be with us today. What a wonderful day it is to be alive, and we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We know that it's uh, what most people term the Easter season, uh, but I want you to know that what we're celebrating is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We understand that every Sunday for us in the church, but today we take that time and we realize that we celebrate it together with all of Christendom that this is the celebration of Jesus Christ's resurrection. He is not there. He is risen, even as He said, and we're celebrating that today. So, so glad that you're here. I know the worship and praise was off the hook as far as I'm concerned, but I'll be honest with you, it's been so long since we've been able to really get in, in church, and we've been having a great time virtually. We thank God that very quickly... At least we believe going forward that we're going to be back in the house of God together and able to assemble together. And not only those of us that have been there, but prayerfully, many others will be coming along and bringing themselves back in to the church. But we're so glad that you're here with us today. New Covenant, welcome. Glad that you're all up and, and, and with us this morning and celebrating the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. For everyone else that's joining us, we're glad you're here. We pray that some way today, the word that we speak, uh, the message that God has put on our heart will be a blessing to you. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with the circumstances uh, that are going on in the world today. Uh, we all know what's going on, and we believe that God has moved against this thing, and we are seeing a turnaround. We know that we are protected, so that's enough said, and we pray for those that are affected by it. God, heal them. God, deliver them and lift them up. And give us a resurrection miracle today, God, for all of those that need it. That is our prayer. We're not timid about it. We're bold about it. Our God is a healer. He's a Savior. Amen. So save us, Lord, and save those that really need your touch today. Today, as we start and we move out into what we want to say, I believe that God has put a, a message on my heart. It's not only uh, dealing uh, with resurrection, which certainly we want to, to be there, um, we're not uh, theming in a lot of things, although we need to deal with that today uh, in the sense, but I, I want to deal with the object of resurrection, and that is Jesus Christ. I want to deal with Him. So today, I believe that God, several weeks ago, began to deal with my heart about this after things began to happen the way that, that they've happened, and we've had to follow the measures that we're following with social distancing and all of those things and realizing that resurrection season this year was going to be different, uh, God really began to deal with my heart. And I was kind of, um, I don't want to say timid about it, you know, but when God's dealing with my heart, I want to get humble before Him and I want to stay humble before Him. I want God to deal with me and show me exactly what He wants for His people and what He wants for me. 
And, and so today, my God, I, I'm praying for all of the pastors and all of the, the ministers of the gospel around the world, my brothers and my sisters, go for it. No, let's win souls. Let's see Jesus uplifted. Let's celebrate the resurrection. But God had been dealing with my heart, and He, uh, he gave me a message and began to take me into the Word, begin to pray and seek the face of the Lord, and not only pray just in that physical mannerism, but pray in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, and immersing myself in the Word of God as God would begin to deal, things, uh, deal with me about things. And this is what the Lord spoke to my heart, and it would seem kind of strange to me uh, with resurrection here, but I think that God has made things work for me, and I hope that I can make that work for all of us today. Stay with us to the end. Listen to the Word as I minister to you. I believe that God not only has a blessing in it for you, He has healing in it for you. He has deliverance in it for you. So stay tuned. Stay in tune with it and listen to what the Lord will say. But God dropped this word in my heart. And He dropped this phrase in my heart. And it's what I have entitled what I'm going to minister today if you want to title the message. It is the only door that heaven cannot open. The only door that heaven cannot open. It's important to understand that. I thought, God, that's an odd title for, for a message. God, that's odd. And, and the Lord said, you know, Bishop, it'll make sense to you later on. Just follow me. And I said, okay, God, I'll do that. And, and I will. The only door heaven cannot open. I want to take this morning for the first scripture that I have that takes us to that. John chapter 10, verses 7 through 9. John chapter 10, verses 7 through 9. Lord, we just thank you. While you're, while you're getting there with me, let me just say, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful Resurrection Sunday morning. Oh, God, be with us. Be with everyone, Lord, that is watching, everyone that will hear the words that are spoken. Take your word. Let it be a timely word, not only for the season of resurrection, but for the season of our lives that we are in. God, we need a resurrection. Many people need a resurrection today. So the only door heaven cannot open. John 10, verses 7 through 9. Jesus speaking said, uh, recorded in the Word of God for us, then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. Hallelujah. And will go in and out and find pasture. I thought it was odd that God would begin to speak to me about doors and about what a door is. And then place in my heart the word that Jesus said, I am the door. And I know that I've preached on it many times, maybe not from the viewpoint that I have now, but I've preached in this scripture uh, many times, and I know that you've, you've heard messages on this, but here is the thing. I want to talk to you today not only about Jesus and try to really bring it to resurrection the way that we need it to be, but I want to talk to you about Him, Jesus, being the door. It's important to understand that a door is a barrier. It is designed to keep things out or to keep things in. But I thought it was interesting whenever I began to research that out, and so I, I began to study about Jesus saying, I am the door. Well, if the Lord said, I am the door, I want to know what He means. And we know there are many spiritual meanings that could be placed there, and there's, there's an overarching spiritual meaning to it. But I was interested in, in the Lord saying, I am the door to the sheep. And the first definition and realization of it is that I am the barrier. It's designed, the first design of a door is to be a barrier, to keep something out or to, to keep something in. Jesus said, I'm the barrier. He said, I'm the door of the sheep. The first thing is, is a defense of the sheep and a defense of the sheepfold. So I got to looking at the Greek about that word, uh, door and that word that is used there is the Greek word thera. And what it means is an opening or a portal. 
There is no mention of an exit. Not in this word as it is presented. In the Hebrew, it, it equates to the word gate. And again, when you define that out, it talks about being let in and not being let out. And I thought that was kind of odd. Jesus said, I am the door. It talks about being a barrier. It talks about keeping things out or keeping things in. But when you get down to the understanding and the meaning of it, it is an opening or a portal to get in. Jesus said, I am the way in. And it's important to understand that because you can't get out until you get in. And the fact of the matter is, we don't want to get out once we get in. So once the Lord opens to us the door that He is, then He has that keeping power that allows us to stay there. And of course, the Bible says that all that come in by Him can go in and out. It does not mean that we're in the kingdom, out of the kingdom, in Christ, out of Christ. It means that once we have come through the door that Christ says He is, we have been given entrance into that kingdom into Christ Himself, into that place to which nothing else is allowed to enter unless it comes by Him. Thank God on this Resurrection Sunday morning that Jesus Christ has become a portal that we might get in. I don't want to get sidetracked on that anymore. I just want to, uh, for any, any great amount of time, I just wanted to present to you that Christ said of Himself, listen, when Jesus says that He is something, I want to know what He says. He said, I'm a door. I said, okay, God, then tell me about a door. I know you got to be pretty slow. You got to be pretty slow not to understand what a door is. Most people understood that before they ever went to kindergarten. You know, we start guarding people about doors. But do we really understand not only the physical meaning of it, but the spiritual meaning of Christ saying, I am the door. Not a door, but the door. I am the door. And he said it twice in that passage of Scripture. I am the door. So I've talked to you about the door, and I've talked to you about what a door is, and just to give us a foundation to move forward on. Christ is the door. But remember, I told you that when I wanted to talk to you that I was going to talk to you about the only door that heaven cannot open. Jesus saying, I am the door. So go with me to Matthew chapter 27, verses 51 to 53. Matthew 27, 51 to 53. And I want to talk to you a little bit about doors. I want to talk to you a little bit about doors. I want to talk to you about Christ being the door, but I want to talk to you about doors that heaven opened. I'm going to talk to you at the end about the only door heaven cannot open, but I want to talk to you first and foremost about the door that heaven does open, the doors that heaven has opened. The first one, deals directly with the resurrection season that we are in in Matthew 27, 51 through 53. The Bible says, Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the graves after His resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. I want you to know that supernaturally, God is a God of doors. We think about it sometimes in the context of this. If we have an open door with somebody, it means that we are in communication with them. If we have an open door with someone, it means that things are good with them. One of the meanings of of, of a door, period, uh, we use in terminology to say that we have a place of agreement. There is a door between us. There is a door that is open between us. If that door is shut, we do not have a place of agreement. If that door is open, then we have a place of agreement. I want you to know that Christ, first and foremost, is our means of agreement. I want you to know that God has from the beginning created ways and doorways for us to get through. God will open the windows of heaven, pour us out a blessing that there is not room enough to contain Him. God is all about doors and gates. He's about windows. He's about those things that are there. In that time of the crucifixion of Christ, in that time of this resurrection season, when Jesus had given up the ghost and died and laid down His life, the Bible says that the earth quaked and the veil of the temple was rent. If you read the King James, or most of the modern versions say that the veil of the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. God was opening a door. 
I want you to know that mercy never had a problem getting out. Mercy was not confined behind the veil. Man was confined from going into the veil. It was God that wanted to give man a way to get access to him through the blood, the precious blood, the sacrifice of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God rent the temple, rent the veil of the temple from the top to the bottom, giving man access to the mercy seat. Who was on that mercy seat? It was now Christ that was seated on that mercy seat. We could now approach the king on his bloody throne where his blood had availed for the sin of mankind. No more would it be hidden behind the veil. God had opened a door. God supernaturally opened a door by the blood of Christ and allowed man to come into that place, to come into the mercy seat, to come into the place of forgiveness. He didn't just cover up our sins. They were no longer hidden behind the veil for a year at a time, but Jesus with his blood washed away every sin that would ever be presented upon the altar of his mercy. God opened a door. Supernaturally, the Lord opened a door there in the veil. Of, when the veil of the temple was rent, he opened the door. So powerful it was that the earth quaked and shook. So powerful it was that the graves of many of the old saints were opened. They were closed up behind the door of a grave. But when Jesus was resurrected, when he became the firstborn from the dead, not only had God opened the door for man to come into the mercy of God, for man to come into the mercy of Christ, but he even opened up graves to prove the power and let them out. They were able to come out and to come in. I want you to know that while Jesus was showing himself alive for that period of time, 40 days after the resurrection, there were saints that had been resurrected and come out of their grave after his resurrection that were able to testify that God can open a door that nobody else can open. God has the ability to open it. God can open doors supernaturally. But let me tell you this. There's a door that heaven can't open. My God, how powerful it was to understand that. Go with me. To Matthew 28, verses 1 and 2. Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 and 2. I want to talk to you a little more about the doors that God can open. God had opened the door. He had released the barrier. He opened the door of the veil of the temple. He, he rent that. He tore that. that, that I, I don't know if God did it himself. I don't know if Christ did it himself. I don't know if he sent an angel to do it. I don't know how it was done, but I want you to know that it was done and he did it so that man could get in, so that man had access. He opened the portal. Jesus said, I am the door. He, by his blood, became the portal for man to have access to the mercy of God. Aren't you glad? If you serve him today, if you know him today, Oh, if you're worshiping him on this resurrection morning, you know what it is to approach the mercy of God, to come to him with every sin that you have, to come to him with every weakness and shortcoming that you have, and to participate and partake of the mercy that he became the door and opened it so you could come to his mercy. My God, how powerful. Matthew 28, 1 and 2. The Bible says, Now after the Sabbath... As the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. Hallelujah. I want you to know that any time there's a symbol, any time there's uh, an earthquake or a strong shaking, it symbolizes the power and the presence of God. Especially we read about in the New Testament, it was there uh, on crucifixion day. It was there on resurrection morning. It was there when God sent an earthquake and shook the jail off its foundation so Paul and his companions could get out so they could set people free. When God begins to move, it will shake things. Hallelujah to God. I want you to know that God is in the process of shaking things right now. The earth is being shaken right now. And I'm glad. I'm glad it's being shaken because people are waking up. And we're waking up this morning on Resurrection Sunday morning to a truth. There may be trouble in the world, but you and I know about a resurrection power that's able to help us. So in that time, on that morning, they came there. And behold, there was an earthquake for an angel of the Lord 
hallelujah, descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door. And he sat on it. Heaven can open doors. Supernaturally, he opened the door at the mercy seat when he tore the veil from the top to the bottom so man could get in. Now we find out that the graves were opened and so that people could escape and have access to his mercy and, and overcome even the strongest enemy that we know that belongs to man today. But they weren't the first out. He was the first out. And after he came out, they came out. Then we come to the Marys coming to the, coming to the, to the, to the tomb. And they had rolled the stone there. But I want you to know that God sent an angel and, and the earth shook and they rolled the stone back. I want you to know Jesus was not in there waiting on them to roll the stone back. No, we're going to find out that he had already come out of that tomb. He rolled the stone back so that man could get in. Now, the women didn't go in, but a couple of his disciples, Peter and John, uh, we're, we're still in the process of trying to understand his death on the cross. Now all of a sudden, they get word from these women who had went to the tomb that God had opened the door. Not so Jesus could get out because he testified he's not there. So the Bible says Peter and John took off running for the tomb. I get the idea that John was younger than Peter because he outran him to the tomb, but he didn't go in. He stood there and waited for Peter to come, but when Peter got there, now you know Peter, oh no, I'm going to see myself. He went in. He went in. And when he went in, he found that there was nobody there but the napkin that they had put upon the face of Jesus was folded away and put in a different place. The stone was not rolled away from the door. The door was Christ. He had walked through the stone. He had walked through the walls of the stone uh, tomb that was around him. God opened a door so that they could get in to see and know that he was no longer there. Supernaturally. But the power not only of the quaking of the earth, the earthquake didn't rock that stone away. The Bible said the angel came and opened it up so that they could get in. Isn't it just like God to make a way where there is no way? They've tried for the last few weeks to seal us up in a tomb. And they put a rock in front of the door. There's a lot of people, bless their hearts, that have not made it. Oh, God, be with those, Lord, that have not made it through this virus and those that are still fighting it, God, be with those that are being protected. But I want you to know this morning there's a resurrection power in God. Even when they didn't know what they were going to do and they put all these things upon us because it's necessary for our safety. But thank God that in the kingdom of God we know that God's opening a door. And I want to believe that right now on Resurrection Sunday morning that the Lord is rolling the stone back away from this death tomb that we've all been experiencing all over the face of the earth and is allowing people to come out because Jesus has proven that he can open a door where there is no door. He'll make a way where there is no way. God knows how to open a door. God specializes in opening doors. Jesus said, I'm the door. I'm the portal. I'm the way in. I'm the way in. And then heaven goes through the process of making us know in his word, how that Jesus becomes the open door. I am the door. If any man will come into me, he can come. He can come in and out. He can find pasture. He's able to come in and out. You can, you can be free in him. You don't have to be trapped on, on the other side of the door. He's given us entrance to come in. And then God has proved us just in the word that I've spoken to you that he knows how to open the door. God has all power. Jesus Christ said, all power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. He said, you'll, see, you'll see power once the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We know that God has power to open the doors. We know that God has power to open the doors. But, 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 but I'm telling you that there's a door that not even heaven can open. Surely to God, Bishop, you must know and understand that if God could supernaturally cause the earth to quake and 
tear the, the, the veil of the temple and rip it from the top to the bottom, allowing people to go in that God could open any door. Surely to goodness, if, if many of the old saints that had been dead for quite some period of time uh, could come up out of their grave after his resurrection, you'd have to know and understand that surely he could open any door. Lazarus in his tomb for four days. Jesus cried out, Lazarus, come forth. Roll away the stone. Get rid of the stone. Let him come out. And he came out bound hand and foot. Surely you know that God has the power to open doors. He went to the tomb on resurrection morning expecting to finish the job that they had done, but there had been a stone that had been rolled away, but God had proven that he can open the door and he sent an angel to reach down there and to come down and to, to roll away the stone that was at the door. And, 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 the, and the angel did that and he sat up on top of it. I thought it was important. God, help me not to backtrack right here. But I'm glad that when God does something, he's cocky and bold enough to sit on top of it. You said, Bishop, it was an angel that sat on top of the stone. Yes, it was. And he was there because God said, God, let me tell you something about angels. They do exactly what they're told to do. They don't do anything except what God commissions them to do. So if that angel rolled the stone away and then sat on top of that stone, it's because God said, make sure when you roll that stone away, you sit on top of it. What did it mean? The stone was blocking the door. Jesus said, I am the door. He had already come out of that tomb. He was already out of that tomb. That angel didn't let him out of that tomb. He came out of the tomb. And then the angel said on top of that that had become a barrier, that that had become a barrier, that that refused to let man in, that that had been standing in the way. Jesus said, this whole thing on the cross, on the cross, I became a door. With my life, I became the door. With my blood and my body, I became the door. Christ is the door. He said, I am the door. I'm the portal. I'm the way in. And we know that God has the ability over and over and over to show us that He can open the door. If He could open the door of the veil of the temple and allow us to the mercy seat of Christ, if He could open the door at the tomb so that man could get in to verify that Christ was risen even before that they had saw him. If he could cause an angel to sit on top of that, if we understood and those of us that know him know how he's led us out of our sin, he forgave us our sin, he opened the door of life to us and allowed us to come out of our sin, to, to come out of iniquity, to come out of heartache. He, he took us out of every foul thing that was binding our life. He took us out of alcohol. He took us out of drugs. He took us out of pornography and perversion. He took us out of lying and cheating and stealing. He caused us to stand up and made us productive citizens of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world because he led us into his mercy and he opened the door so that we could get out of the grave that was holding us. Surely we have to know that God can open any door. But the message that God gave me was for all of the power and all of the anointing that I could exhibit to you through my son who is the door, the portal in, the access in, there is a door that I cannot open. Man, I believe in a God that created this whole world. I believe from the tiniest cell, from the tiniest atom, I believe he's aware of it. To the largest mountain in the deepest sea, God's aware of it. To every human being that has ever been, is now, or ever will be, will be. God is aware of them. He's alive and active. God, He's not doing some experiment with humanity where He created some and just lets it go. Find out what's going to happen. You know, He's very active in our life. Oh, He sent His Son to die for us. And, and today, today, help us, God. Help us to come to you. Help us in this time, not just because. There's a coronavirus. People are trying to get away. But, oh, Lord, help us to come to you, God, so that it's not just out of fear and circumstance, but to realize you're an almighty God that can open doors, that can cause a place of agreement to happen between you and I, Lord, between people, between whatever that it needs to have agreement. God is that way. Jesus has become He said, I'm that door. I believe that this almighty God that we serve can do anything. 
He can heal the sick. He can raise the dead. He can open blinded eyes. He can open deaf ears. He can loose dumb tongues. He can heal the cripple. He can, you know, he raises the dead. My, my God, there's nothing he can't do. He caused the earth to stand still or the sun and the moon to stand still so that his children could, you know, could win a battle. My God, there's he, he sent, you know, a, a, a cloud by day and fire by night to lead them and guide them. He toyed with the enemy. He, he protected his children. There's no, he opened the Red Sea. There's nothing this God can't do. But he said, there is a door that even heaven cannot open. And that door is found in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. In the book of Revelation, the third chapter and the 20th verse, Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation, I thank God it's not called the mystery. I thank God that this last book in our Bible is not called the mystery of God. It's called the revelation of Jesus Christ. Our God's a revealer. He wants you to know. He wants you to know Him he wants you to know everything that's important and necessary for you to know. He, he's given us this word, and in 66 books of love, He's revealed to us His, his will, and we, we've read it time and time and time and time again, and still have not even begun to exhaust its pages because there's still revelation about Him. So in this book of the revelation of Jesus Christ in chapter 3 and verse 20, we find a Savior. And this is what he says. This is the Savior that was responsible for the veil of the temple being rent from the top of the bottom. This is the Savior, the God that is responsible for the graves being opened. This is the Savior that was responsible for Lazarus coming out of the grave after four days. This is the God that opened, that sent an angel to open the tomb, to roll back the stone so that the men could get in to see that, that he was a God that could do anything. This is the God. This is, this is the God, the God-man, Jesus Christ, that said, I am the door to the sheep. I am. I'm not only the bearer. I am the, I am the portal and the opening into the sheepfold. I am the door. And for all of that power, for all of that power, there's a door that not even heaven can open, found in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. And this is what Jesus said. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. This almighty, all powerful, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God that created everything seen and unseen that spoke the world into existence by His Word that has proven over and over and over again He is a God of, 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 of doorways, of portals, of gateways. He's a God to open a place of agreement. Jesus came to be the door of agreement between God and man. He came to be the door of reconciliation between God and man. Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, the first begotten of God, God's only begotten Son when He came. He's proven He has the power. But now in the book of Revelation, in chapter 3 and verse 20, we find this almighty God, Jesus Christ, this glorious Lord standing at a human door knocking. He has the power to force His way in. He has the power to destroy any, anything hindering. He has the power to open doors, but there is a door that not even heaven can open. He has put within your power and within my power, within the heart and the life of every, within the spirit of every human being, God has put the ability to be a door. The door of your heart is a door that not even heaven can open. Not even heaven can open, but God will stand. Jesus Christ stands at your heart's door and knocks. This God that 
can do anything, has humbled himself and so presented himself as a loving, merciful God of grace and glory than it when it comes to every single human being on the face of the earth. He stands at the door and knocks. And for every door that he has proven that he can open, he has also given us proof and evidence here that there is a door that he cannot open and that it's a door to your heart and my heart. If Jesus Christ has not come into your heart, then behind that door is every evil thing that can be imagined. Every hate and sin and murder, every perversion and wickedness and filth and disgust is what's locked into the heart of someone that doesn't know him. Even for the good moral person that can say, I've never cheated anybody and I don't lie and and I, and I don't do any of these other kind of things. I want you to know it's, it's not just because of the bad things. It's because you haven't opened the door to let him in. You see, it's not just the good and the bad that affects a person. It is the fact that Jesus is standing at the door and knocking. And there's got to be that place of agreement between you and God. There has to be that place where you say, Lord, for every door that you can open, God, for every door that you've proven, you can open. You can annihilate it. God, you can do it. There is a door that not even heaven can open, and that is the door of your heart and the door of my heart. He stands at the door and he knocks. On Resurrection Sunday morning, it, 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 followed, it followed the death and the burial of Jesus Christ. While I was studying this word, I, I saw him on the cross, hands outstretched. I saw the thorn crown on his brow that had pierced him and come down. I, I saw the nails in his hands. I saw the nails in his feet. And as I was looking at that, it was as though I saw him lay back against the cross as he was hanging there. And it was as if the Lord painted a picture and I saw a door go across, a doorway go across the top of the cross and then come down past the sides of the cross where his hands would be and then go all the way to the ground. And it was as if the Lord said, you see, I'm the door. And but what's happening here today, what's happening on this crucifixion, not I'm putting the blood on the door and I'm becoming the door and the only way in. And I saw his blood and I thought, my God, it, it's not just as it was in the first covenant, but not only was there blood all over and Jesus said, I am the door into the sheepfold. It was paid for with the price of his blood. And I saw the blood as it began to stream down the cross and drip from his hands, from his brow and from his feet. And I realized the price that you paid to be the door to the sheep. And how necessary it is for every human being, young or old, male or female, rich or poor, to come to him and say, Lord Jesus, for everything that you can do and for everything that God can do, the one thing you can't do is open the door of my heart. That I have to do. Let me read it again. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Jesus said, Behold, look, behold, look. Behold means to look, look and see, take notice of. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So as we come to the end of this message today, I want to ask you to be sincere. Even the children of God today, those that already know Him, be sincere. Especially for those of you that may be watching that feel uneasy right now because you hear His voice. Do you hear His voice today? Is there something tugging at the door of your heart? Really, what you're hearing is a knock. It's a knock of an Almighty God. 
you can make short work of anything and everything. But when it stands at your heart's door, he said, I'm, I'm going to knock. And if you will open to me, I will come in. I'll be your Savior. I'll be your Lord. Oh, that's not written in the scripture I read to you, but that's what he's saying. But I want you to know that you have to open the door. It's not about some long prayer. It's not about some form of religion. It's not about some form to follow or an owl to walk. It's about a heart that hears the knock of Christ at the door. This God that can open any door before him supernaturally, but refuses to open the door of the human heart that says, there's one door that heaven cannot open. One door that I have to have your agreement. One door that I have to have your agreement for, and that is the door of your heart. If you hear my voice, if you feel me knocking, and you open to me, I will come in. I'll come in and you'll eat with me. You'll take nourishment from me. You'll live by what I get. And I'll dine with you. I'll live through you. I want you to know that God's not mad at you. I want you to know that he's just knocking at the door saying, I want to change you. I want to change the circumstances. I want to heal you. I want to protect you. I want to be your God. I am God. You ought to see what I could do with the door. You ought to see what I could do with the veil. You ought to see what I could do with a stone at the tomb. You ought to see what I could do with a grave full of dead men's bones. I can bring them out, but I'm standing at your heart's door. And if you'll let me come in, I'll come into your heart. I'll change you. I'll make you to be the child of God that you want and need to be. I'll teach you my word. I'll help you to understand. I'll help you to understand life and understand what's going on. So right now, right where you are, I'm going to ask him, ask all of God's people that are with me, all of you that know, know him, all of you that know the Lord is your Savior. Lord, would you pray? And maybe those that are around you, maybe you're at home with just your family, your loved ones, uh, uh, or maybe there are other people that are together around you within what is allowable, but would you pray? And for those of you that don't know Jesus, if you can hear him, maybe you're, you're sitting there thinking, my God, I, I feel this and, and I feel like that he's knocking at my door. Just open it right now. I'm going I'm to go to prayer with you. I want you to pray with me. I'm going to lead you in prayer. And I want you to pray this with me. And I want everyone to pray it with me. And I want you to come on this resurrection Sunday morning, right in the middle of all of the crisis, and let this God that can open every door except the door of the human heart that you must open. The only door that heaven cannot open is the door of your heart. Would you pray with me right now? Go on, just pray right now. Be bold, be strong, and say, Lord Jesus, I believe the word that I've heard today. I believe it. Something's going on in my heart. I can feel this knock at my heart's door. So right now, Lord Jesus, I open my heart's door. Right there, right there where you are. Say, Lord Jesus, I open my heart's door. I want you to forgive me. I want you to save me. I want you to come into my heart. I believe that you're the son of the living God. I believe you died on that cross for the sin of mankind. I believe you died on that cross and rose again to reconcile us to Father God in heaven. I believe, Jesus, that you lived, that you died, and that you rose again on the third day. That's what we're celebrating on this resurrection Sunday morning. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. And if you do that, and if you mean that with everything that you have, just saying it because you're responding to the Lord. If you believe that, then Jesus Christ has come through the doorway of your heart. And now it becomes a door that he controls, a doorway into your life, and you have come through the portal that is Christ because Jesus said, I am the door. And if you prayed that prayer as simple as it is, as short as it was, and you meant it, you are now among the sheep, the flock that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is every blood-bought, repentant, confessed, and accepted child of God that has said Jesus is Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you right now God for everybody that prayed with us. Those Lord that already know you bless them, lift them up, strengthen them let them be encouraged, helped healed and protected today God for everybody that may have prayed today God and asked you to come into their heart and into their life and accepted you as Savior and opened the door of their heart. The only door 
that heaven cannot open. And they opened the door of their hearts so that Jesus would come in. Let them know that they also passed through the doorway of Christ. And they belong to the greatest family that there is anywhere known to God. And that is the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for salvation, for healing, deliverance, protection, and anointing. We make our prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that God will bless you. Go and have a wonderful rest of this Resurrection Sunday. Enjoy yourself and God praise Him. Worship Him. Get your heart up before Him. Lift your voices in song and worship the Lord and enjoy this resurrection season. May God be with you and bless you. May God keep you and strengthen you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you as you go forward. Have a wonderful time. And come and join us again next week. God bless you. Happy resurrection to you.